on Board Offline. Today we've got a Lantern Year One Gorm playthrough for you. So I'll be going through the settlement phase of Lantern Year One right here, which I don't believe I've done in a previous video. So anybody that wants to see how that very first round of the game goes during the settlement phase, here is your opportunity. And then in the second part of this, uh, this two-part series, I'll go through the hunt phase for Gorm and then the showdown phase with Gorm. Also, in this video, you're going to see these wooden player, uh, not player mats, but player player boards, wooden player boards that I have that uh, has the, uh, the, the gear grid built into it, as well as stat tracking dials built into it. And these are some really cool, uh, really cool little player aids here that I uh, have enjoyed having, um, but I think that since I play solo primarily, and you'll see in this video that I am for the first time learning to use this app that tracks most of the stats in the game as well, I may as a solo player find that app to be the most useful to the point where I don't even need to use the, uh, the player aids that come with the game, the, the, the player sheets that come with the game. And so for that reason, Watch the showdown phase when that comes out, part two, and I may have something really interesting for y'all with regards to these wooden player boards, because I know a lot of people don't like using apps, a lot of people still like using, you know, the, the tangible stuff, and uh, yeah, so be sure to check out the second part of this series for an interesting opportunity for one of y'all in there. Uh, let's see, I think that's pretty much it before we get started here. Also, be sure to check the description of the video below for various ways you can support the channel. Uh, but yeah, let's get right down into our Gorm Lantern Year One settlement phase. Okay, so here we go. We are beginning the first Lantern Year of a new People of the Lantern campaign. I uh, have played through one campaign, got to about Lanier 13 or so, somewhere in there, and I'm getting wiped out. So uh, this one is going to be number two for me. Now, technically, I did start another one uh, in between these two, but got a total party kill in the first Lantern year by Gorm. So we're going to try that again, see if we can do a little bit better. Gorm is going to be a part of this one, so that obviously is the fight you are going to see today. And we're going to start with the settlement phase here and work our way through until we get to the Gorm fight. And what else? This, this, this campaign will also feature the Flower Knight is going to be in here, the Manhunter. No, I'm sorry, not the Manhunter. Where is it? Did I put a man? Yes, yes. The Flower Knight and the Manhunter. So landing year five, we're going to be real busy because both of them show up in landing year five. And... Slenderman, and the reason I put um, that many expansions in is Gorm replaces the White Lion, so I don't feel like that's much of a problem. And Slenderman actually replaces the Kingsman, so again, not a huge problem there because I'm subbing out. So really the only two additions in terms of extra stuff to deal with is the Flower Knight and the Manhunter. So let's go in and start working through here. What we've got, we've got um, these player boards here, which I did a video on these if y'all want to go back and see those. I this, this character is Baker. I always like to throw myself in there at the beginning. I have a just a cloth right now. Here's Brandy with a cloth and a founding stone. Let's pan over a little bit and you can see we've got uh, Garcon with a cloth and all the way over there is Rebish with a cloth and a founding stone. Okay, as far as resources go, we've got uh, monster bone, great cat bone, the who knows what, lion claw, monster hide, white fur, monster hide, and great cat bone. So we've got a decent, I guess we only have one possible organ, but uh, other than that, plenty of hide and bone. So. We'll see what we can make from all that once we get to that point of that phase of this. So obviously survivors return, good there. Gain endeavors, so we're gonna have four endeavors. I'll put these right out of here so we can keep track of those. All right, update timeline. All right, so now I'm using this app. I'm, this is my first time using this app. I'm gonna see if this makes the bookkeeping a bit easier. I've really enjoyed doing the bookkeeping, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try this out. This is 
uh, what is this called? The scribe for KDM is the one I'm using here. All right. So you see Lantern Year One, Settlement Event First Day. I've already done that actually. So we're going to move on to Story Event Returning Survivors. So real quick, with the first day ended up with, you can see I have 10 population, five male, five female. Um, and you can also see it over here. Uh, survival limits one, population 10. And as we go through, I think you'll, you'll get to see how this app can kind of keep track of different stuff. Again, my first time really using it, so we'll see how, if, if it's worth it, if it really saves you know, time and everything. And using it in the, in, in the uh, showdown to keep track of my different survivors and everything that, we, that we've got here. Okay, you see I put OS next to each of these. That's uh, basically how I keep track of original survivors. I like to I like to see who makes it. How you know who's the last original survivor to survive? So that helps me remember that. So back to the timeline. So we've got settlement first day. Already done that. Story event returning survivors. Okay, it's pretty standard. So let's go in and do that real quick. All right, returning survivors nominate a survivor to utter the first words. I think, so this is a survivor we haven't used before. I'm going to go in and have uh, one of them do this. this is going to be uh, Karen is going to utter the first words. The nominated survivor steps forward and gains plus one courage. So let's go on and adjust that. There we go. Plus one courage. All right. They lead the other survivors in learning to speak to one another. They discuss their situation, realizing they must hunt to live. Add the white line uh, to the quarry list on the settlement record sheet, which obviously we're good to go there. The settlement gains the language uh, innovation. All right, so with innovations, uh, basically you can see we can just click on, so in the deck right now is only language, right? Click on that and it throws language up there and now all these other innovations are automatically added to the deck, all right? And on top of that, you can see up here, it automatically added uh, to my survival limit because language increases your survival limit by one. So there you go, we've got language, starting innovation, survival limit plus one, all survivors gain the encouraged survival action, uh, which of course allows you to help other survivors stand up in fights and now I believe, let's check, I believe that should mean survivors. So let's just look at one of them here. And yep, you can see encourage already automatically filled in there. Don't have to change anything there. All right, so build innovation deck, we got that, we've got that done thanks to the app. Armed with language, the nominated survivor aptly names the glowing center of their home, the Lantern Horde. The nominated survivor sits in front of the Lantern Horde in all and gains plus one understanding. So let's go back to Corinne, there we go, and plus one understanding, okay. They must skip the next hunt phase as they ponder the meaning of existence. All right, so where is that? I know that's on here somewhere. Here we go, yep, so you go into the edit and skip next hunt. There we go. Close and you can see now skipping next hunt is up there and I believe we go back to here and right there it also says skipping next hunt. Helps you keep that straight. Um, return to the first story to complete the settlement phase. Okay, all right, so, so we're done with that. But now if we go back to the timeline, you can see that after returning survivors, next is the story event, the approaching storm, which is Gorm. All right, so the approaching storm, the settlement's weather takes a turn for the worse. A light appears on the horizon. From its origin, rolling masses of storm clouds approach the settlement, soaking everything in perpetual sheets of stale smelling rain. Sudden flash floods, burning winds, and periods of strobing lightning continuously plague the settlement, leaving the survivors in epileptic fits. You may now hunt the Gorm. Add it to the quarry list on the settlement record sheet. So as far as I can tell, there's no specific spot on here for quarry. Somebody who's familiar with this app, let me know. So instead, what I'm gonna do, whenever I need to add quarry for now until I figure that out, I'm gonna go down here into the notes. Let's drop that down, oh, okay. And we'll just add the white lion. 
and add Gorm. There you go. Okay, so there we go. So we'll, that's how we'll keep track of that. I, I might, I'm probably, I might be missing it, but I don't see it in here. So that's one small shortcoming if I am looking at this right. And I guess we can go in and actually throw the. I don't really know if that's necessary though, but I'll I'll put those up there just to show you that you can if you don't want to use the tokens. I kind of like having the tokens out. Okay. Anyway, so so Gorm's added as a quarry. Add. Uh, the Gorm Climate Special Event, Settlement Event, excuse me, to the next Lantern Year on the timeline. All right, so right here, Lantern Year 2, add Settlement Event, Gorm Climate. There we go. All right, so you can see that's on there now. Nominated Survivor, gain plus one insanity and brave the storm. Okay, who's this going to be? Again, I don't like using my, my the ones that I actually sent out to fight normally. But I think I will. I think we're going to send, we're going to send Rebish out there. All right, so Nominated Storm, gain plus one insanity and brave the storm. Plus one insanity. All right, and so now Brave the Storm, roll 1d10, all right. A three, the survivor stands in the torrent. Pulsing psychedelic lights strike them, bringing them to their knees. In a flash of morbid inspiration, the nominated survivor takes a stone to their own eyes. They suffer the blind head injury and gain plus one permanent speed. Wow, okay, so, uh, so first, uh, let's see, the... The blind severe head injury, which severe injuries, add severe injury, blind. All right, so you can see it tells you everything about it. Lose an eye, suffer minus one permanent accuracy. This injury is permanent and can be recorded twice. The survivor who you know tells you everything about it, basically. All right, so it tells you to gain and one bleeding token, but obviously not in a showdown, so that doesn't matter. All right, so... But so we, you see, we're at minus one accuracy, but we gained what, what was it plus one permanent speed. So we just go up here and well, first let's go in and close that and then go into the attributes and uh, plus one speed. So next up, we would update the death count. No one has died. Check milestone story events. We're good there. Go to develop. All right, so let's take a look at this. All right, so we've got four bone resources, three hide, and one whatever. However, I think we're going to use that whatever as an organ because we innovating is definitely super important, and so we're gonna we definitely want to innovate. So you see, uh, need an endeavor, a bone, an organ, a hide once per settlement phase. You may spend the listed resources to draw two innovation cards, keep one, and return the other to the deck. All right, uh, so we're going to use this this and and normally I would try to use the generic monster bonus but I don't plan on hunting the white line at all during this uh, there, this um, campaign so because of that the white line specific resources aren't super important to me so we'll use those three resources to endeavor and of course oh, I'm sorry to innovate and of course one endeavor all right so Let's go to the innovation deck and you can see you can uh, draw two innovation cards and we drew ammonia and paint. So let me grab those real quick. All right, so here we've got paint, which is an art and obviously a language consequence. Uh, the settlement swells with creative energy. All survivors gain the dash survival action. Now that is really good. And a lot of times I find myself without dash because I spend too much time with getting the other things. But let's check out ammonia again. Um, it's a science and a language consequence. A pungent bilious, bilious substance ideal for crafting leather and treating wounds. Departing survivors gain plus one survival. Mm, man, okay. I don't know. I think... Actually, I was planning on going with ammonia. And I think I will. Even I'm, I'm going to try to get dash next time, but for now, ammonia is definitely where we're going. Okay, so and, and you know, even now, I'm still torn because dash is really, really clutch in a lot of a lot of cases. 
but ammonia, I just know that at least it's some good things. And it gives me that plus one survival when we depart. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ammonia. All right. So of course you can see the innovation deck then, uh, added bloodletting and, and whatever and drums and all this other stuff that ammonia brings and ammonia is up here under innovations. So we're good there. So now the question is, what are we going to do with the rest of this? Now, I think we don't have any organs, so there's no real good reason to build the organ grinder. I think we go ahead and build the bonesmith and the skinnery right now, and we can maybe use that last endeavor to, well, we'll see. Okay, so two endeavors to get us the skinnery and the bonesmith. Oh, but you know what? I just realized the problem with that plan is that the augury is on the organ grinder. I love using the augury at least once per round. Mm. But, but all this requires either organs or canthus. I just don't have, and that you gotta have heat obviously as well and a, and a scrap. So I just, I, I think it wouldn't be worth spending an effort just to get the organ grinder, just to use the augury. So yeah, okay. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna do the organ grinder this time. We'll go ahead and get the skinnery, which of course is one of our best ways to get armor initially and the bonesmith, which has a whole lot of weapons on it. So now the question becomes, what do I want to build and who am I gonna give it to? And am I going to send Rebish on this hunt now that he's blind in one eye, which I think, though I will, I think that's pretty badass. And he's got that, he does have plus one speed, even though his accuracy is down. So, uh, but what do we give each person? All right, so let's, let's look at, let's look at the, the armor first. All right, so bandages are good for bleed. I, I'm not sure how much Gorm is going to make me bleed, so I'll leave those alone. And the rest of that we can just ignore. Okay, so the headband, the raw high. I think head armor is always important. Or do I want to give one person two pieces of armor or two people one piece of armor? So here we got the skinnery stuff. Let's look through this real quick so I can show you. So the rawhide headband. Uh, Oh, now that does have the reveal. Oh, maybe, you know what? Maybe we're going to create a support character. You know what? Hold on. So rawhide headband, that would be one hide. And then the vest, let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. So we'll do that. Who are we going to give that to? Should Ryan become a support character? Since No, because he's got that speed. Of course, speed can be tricky. But yeah, I do think that's what we're going to do. We're going to give Ryan... Um, excuse me, Rebish, the rawhide headband with the rawhide vest, and uh, well, obviously he'll, he will keep the cloth with him. Actually, I was trying to take this. The we're gonna give the founding stone to Garcon over here. So Ryan's intention or Rebish's intention will be to not fight most of the time if he can help it, whereas she will uh, continue fighting. And so that, that'll work out just fine. I'm still unarmed, so let's, let's see about getting me a weapon down there. But that did use our two hides, so that's gone now. So we do, I mean, we can go use all three bones and give me a bone club and I could just, does the bone club have reach? I don't think it does. Hey, let's take a look at that. I remember that weapon is pretty serious weapon but i think i think that actually if we were going to use that hold on let's see all right it is weapon melee uh two-handed heavy club and bone and it's cumbersome so we have to spend movement as an additional cost to activate this weapon ignore cumbersome if this weapon is activated indirectly all right so probably before we use this we should get dash otherwise it it's going to hamper us not to mention and then nobody else can 
get anything. How much does the, the bone axe requires an organ, so we can't do that. Okay, so I think my plan here is I'm gonna use my three bone resources to give each person other than Rebish a weapon. Now obviously Garçon and Brandy already have the founding stones, but they may wanna throw those to get that uh, critical hit. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, we're gonna go with a range of different weapons. We've got the bone dagger here, three speed, seven plus accuracy, one strength on a perfect hit, gain plus one survival. And obviously a perfect hit is when you roll a result of a lantern 10. So we're gonna build that. The Bone Blade, two speed, six plus accuracy, and two strength. Uh, it's frail, which uh, it's interesting. The Bone Dagger is not frail. That's, that's pretty cool. And then we've got the uh, Bone Darts, which are uh, a weapon range thrown bone. These are both melee, obviously. Um, so it has one speed, seven plus accuracy, but then three strength. Uh, and it's also frail and has a range of six. So Garcon, we're going to give her the bone dagger. I think we'll put that there. Let's move the founding stone. Brandy will give her the bone darts. And we'll give me the bone blade. That does use up all three of our bone resources. And so I think that's pretty much all we can do in the develop step because there's nothing, we're just gonna have a wasted endeavor, I'm afraid. Can't use shared experience. Shared experience is one thing you could use an endeavor for, but you can see, uh, come on, focus, focus. Shared experience, nominated survivor that has two or more hunt experience than yourself. Well, everybody either has one or none, so that doesn't work. There's no endeavors that we can do here. So yeah, it's just gonna be a wasted endeavor. That's unfortunate. So now we're at the prepared departing survivors. All right, so let's make sure that everybody's got the appropriate stuff. So uh, we're gonna have Baker go out again. And now his armor, it's gonna be one for the waist. Okay, and so once also I get this set up, oops, didn't mean to do that, change that, okay. I go here and mark him as departing. All right, and you can see already departing survivors gain plus one survival because of ammonia. So that's getting taken care of. Now, next up we've got uh, Brandy. Here we go. She has cloth, okay. So her armor, waist, okay. Oops. And we've got Garcon. And again with cloth. And Rebish, who has a little bit more armor, we've got one for waist, head, and body. Okay, so now we've got our four departing survivors. So let's go ahead and get our hunt set up. We're gonna go hunt down a Gorm. All right, so there you go. We are off to the hunt. This is going to be uh, <laughs> an interesting time because like I said before, Gorm has done a total party kill to me once before in Lantern Year One. So hopefully I can avoid that this time. We will see. I've got, I do have the uh, the, the headgear there, the, the rawhide headgear, headband. Uh, so hopefully that will give me an advantage in dealing with his AI cards and maybe even being able to uh, you know, preemptively select the one that I can then remove from the deck by putting it on top and then getting a wound. Of course, that can always backfire on you. You can put that one on top, expect to get a wound and then get no wounds. And then of course the, the worst out of the two you, you looked at ends up attacking you. So anyway, I think that's pretty much it. Be sure to check back here pretty soon for the second part, the hunt phase and the showdown phase. And uh, be sure to check the description below for various ways to support the channel. Find me on Twitter, at Offline. And if you uh, 
If you, if you like the channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.